Hello, my name is Leslie Amerson. I am going to be doing a short vlog on some of the different themes in the Old Testament. There are many different themes um, throughout the Bible and in the Old Testament, but two of them that I'm going to discuss in this video are the sovereignty of God and covenants. The first theme that I'm going to be discussing is covenants. There are five major covenants that we find in the Old Testament. There's the Adamaic, the Noahic, the Abrahamic, the Mosaic, and the Davic. These were all covenants that the Lord made with individuals. Four of the individuals um, had actually obeyed God and one of them did not. The first is the Adamaic covenant. This covenant can actually be found in Genesis 3, 14 through 19. The passage is actually a pretty long passage where God is actually telling the serpent that he will return back to the earth and crawl on his belly. He'll be below all other livestock. And he is also instructing to Adam and to Eve that um, the, the woman will have animosity between her and the serpent and that her offspring will have animosity between his offspring and that the woman will actually have her pain multiplied in childbirth and that she will um, be submissive to her husband, but they'll have different views. And also the to Adam, God was saying that he will return to the dust from the dust is where he came and that he will work the earth all the days of his life. And by the sweat of his brow will he produce um, the food that he shall eat. As we look at this certain passage, we see in a particular part of it how God is making a covenant saying that there will be animosity between Eve and her offspring between the serpent and his offspring. This actual covenant is pointing to how Jesus will overcome the devil in the New Testament. As we look at that covenant, we're able to see how God fulfills it after even from the, in the beginning to now when Jesus came back. To earth. The second covenant is the Noahic covenant. This covenant was given to Noah in Genesis 8 20 through 9, Genesis 8 20 and Genesis 9 17. Genesis 8 20 through 21 states that Noah built an altar for the Lord to take some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offer it as a burnt offering on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man. For the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have, as I have done. This is right after the great flood happened. And the Lord promised to never flood the earth again. God sent a symbol of this promise in the form of a rainbow. This rainbow is very popular in many children's books as we read about Noah and the ark. But this rainbow is actually a covenant from God promising that he will not ever flood the earth again. The third covenant is the Abramatic covenant. This covenant was made to Abram in Genesis 12, 1 through 3. The Lord told Abram that he would go from his country in from his country where his kindred and his father's house to the land that he God was going to show him which was ended up being the land of Cana and it would be he would make a great nation out of Abraham and he would bless him and make great his name and that he would be a blessing and he would bless those who blessed him and who dishonored Abram and his family would be cursed and all and in all the families of the earth shall be blessed so God made this covenant with Abraham as an act of grace. Abraham was instructed to leave his homeland to follow God wherever God led him to. This covenant was to be passed down through generations. Abraham was to train his family to do what was right and to uphold the agreement of this covenant with an act called circumcision. The details of this particular act in this covenant are actually laid out in Genesis 17, 9-14. In that particular passage, God is describing how every male in Abram's house, every male servant, anybody that was a male in Abram's house would be circumcised to uphold this covenant. The next covenant is the Mosaic covenant. This covenant was made actually for the nation of Israel through Moses in Exodus 19 and ex through Exodus 24. God delivered Israel from Egypt out of a life of slavery and promised to make them his holy nation. God promised to dwell personally with them 
in their midst and to bring them to the promised land. This covenant was a conditional covenant of grace. The nation of Israel was commanded to obey the terms embodied in the laws given on Mount Sinai to Moses, which were actually summarized in the Ten Commandments. In this covenant, God also promised to bring pro blessings if they followed his commandments, but curses if they disobeyed, which is stated in Deuteronomy 28.15. It says, But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, or be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes that I command you today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. God asked his people to uphold this covenant by keeping the Sabbath day holy. The final covenant I want to touch on in the Old Testament is the David covenant. God established this covenant with David and promised to make him king over Israel and that David's name would be great. God gave David a royal kingdom and his kingdom fulfilled the promises made to Abraham through his lineage. This covenant was fulfilled due to the nation of Israel wanting a king. And Saul, which was the first king that was anointed by God from the tribe of Benjamin, failed to obey God. And so he was rejected as king. But in 2 Samuel 7, we read how God then chose David, the son of Jesse, from the tribe of Judah. David became a successful leader, overcoming Israel's enemies and restoring the presence of God. The fulfillment of the David covenant is completed when an everlasting faithful David king comes to power in the, in the form of Jesus Christ. The second theme that I want to discuss is God's sovereignty. Throughout the Old Testament, we are reminded of God's sovereignty and how he is in control. For us as God's children, God's sovereignty is the ultimate comfort. Knowing that there is no authority higher than God who created us, loved us, and died to redeem us. Several stories in the Old Testament describe this love for, from God in the, describe this love from God. In the story of Joseph found in Genesis, we see how every act that Joseph went through was God's ultimate plan. Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. He was then arrested for something he didn't do. Um, Potiphar had him thrown in jail. And then after going through that, being in prison for all those years, he eventually became second in command of Egypt. All of this happened so that way Joseph would be in the proper place at the proper time for when a famine ended up taking over the land. Since Joseph was in that position, he was able to help provide for his family. His brothers found out who Joseph was, and they were so afraid that Joseph was going to be mad at them. But Joseph, showing God's grace, actually said to them, in Genesis 50, 20, it reads, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. This verse is a powerful reminder of the sovereignty of God. Another example of God's sovereignty is seen in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel is a great place to begin studying the sovereignty of God because we are seeing how God was there. He had things happen and made things happen because it was part of his plan. In Daniel chapters 1 through 3, we read about how Daniel was a servant of God. But Daniel was still captured along with all of his people and delivered into the hands of the enemies. While in captivity, we see Daniel continue to stand firm in his convictions and his love for the Lord. However, Daniel's boldness does land him and his friends in trouble with the different kings. But God remains by their side through it all and uses their trials as a way to bring the hard-hearted kings to their knees and turn to God. These two stories are such a great reminder of how even as we walk through trials that God will use every circumstance we go through for his glory. The two themes I chose are just some of the many represented throughout the Old Testament. The theme of covenant is a great reminder of God's promises. This theme is so important for us as Christians to because our faith is based on the promises that God made. And if we look at the promises made throughout the Old Testament in various different ways through the covenants, we can see how God always shows up and he stays true. The theme of God's sovereignty is a truly God is in control viewpoint. The theme is needed for our daily reading of the Old Testament. When we read stories like Joseph and Daniel, we can know that our trials are the ultimate plan of God. 
Without each of these themes woven throughout the Old Testament, I believe that the true story that God is telling would not be understood. I hope that this brings a little bit of clarity to some of the themes in the Old Testament. And if this was interesting to you, please let me know. Thank you.